Hola, bienvenidos. Welcome, everybody. So, how many of y'all know about cheater chords? Uh, they go by different names, I believe, but if you go into Johnstone, ask for a cheater chord, you get one of these. So, it's basically a plug and it can replace your extension cord. So, if you want to run uh, anything that you have that runs on 120 volts, your recovery, your vacuum pump, uh, power tools, any equipment like that. Instead of running a long extension uh, up on a roof, if you're, you know, very far away from one, this can help you out. Uh, as long as you have 120 or 208 around you, you can tap in and I will show you how. All right, so I have my uh, cheater cord here. It's gonna be one that I got from Johnstone. It has the three big clips and then the outlet. So I'm gonna show it to you on a few different units that I, that I, I would work on. They're commercial units. I'll try and show you a residential one too. So I don't mess with the disconnect box. I don't like, like working with live wire. I don't like any sh uh, shocked, and I don't want you guys to either. So what I like to do is I like to take this is going to be a tool weight coil contact. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the one that hooks up to the uh, the one that's jumped from line to, to the coil. I'm going to disconnect that so that the contactor does not engage uh, anything up here. And then you can either take that jumper. So let's say this one's insulated so I can't really do too much with it. but. If you had a jumper, you could take it and hook up here. Or, since this one is the one feeding the coil, this is my line voltage. I'm just gonna unscrew this and take this out and hook that up to my line and then ground out the other ones. And that'll give me the 115. All right, so I unscrewed this and I took that out because that's the one that is jumping to the coil. The coil will not be engaged now. So then you're gonna take your uh, cheater cord. And you're gonna clamp onto that. Try not to have anything exposed so that you don't uh, cause any sparks. And then we're gonna ground the other one. Preferably on the ground, but this one's just a little screw. So we're grounded out and we have that. Like I said, be mindful that this is gonna be live. So try not to touch this. Make sure it's away from everything else. I'm not gonna hit anything metal. You know, just when you're using this, you gotta be careful. So we're gonna turn it back on. Nothing comes on in the cooler. And then right now I'll show you the voltage. So we're hooked up to the, I gotta kind of push it in. And you get 117, so. That's what I like to do, get the one that's feeding the coil, take it out and use that as your line and then ground the other two, and then you're fine. Just be very careful in this area. Do not run into it, do not tap it, do not touch it, wear gloves, you'll be fine. Okay, and a commercial package unit AC, same thing but you need to be mindful of the thermostat so what i would do instead of disconnecting all the contactors is you can either remove r just leave it disconnected which this is not even set up for two stage anyway you can uh Take off R or take off your load side over here, your 24. And uh, that way, when you go, you're gonna steal a leg. Obviously, you're gonna take one off. I always take it off the contactor so that I have a disconnect to shut off. I don't wanna do it live. So I'm gonna steal one here and then we'll hook it up. Obviously, it has to be a 208 system. It can't be like a 460 or anything higher. Uh, 208 or 120 that way you can take a live leg and then ground the other side All right, so we took a leg 
try to get it insulated as much as you can. No wire touching anything. Ground the other two. And then we will test it real quick. So we got our meter there. So we got 123 with our setup right here. So we can use that plug now. All right guys, and now it's a freaking cold day. We got another cold front that came in. So I got a split system here, residential unit. So let us kill power. And then we're gonna take off the panel here. So right now the unit's not even calling, but uh, verify that we don't have voltage. So I'm checking the line that's coming in from the disconnect. And that's where we're gonna steal power. Okay, so for this one, you take off uh, one line that's coming in because you're getting 208 to this coil, I mean to this contactor as a line side. So you only need one. You're gonna ground out the other two like we've done on our other connections. Okay, and I do wanna say uh, mine's not calling because I have the thermostat off. But if you're worried about it turning on, you can disconnect uh, one of these from the coil. The only thing is most of the time they're not insulated on the connector. So you could risk shorting out the thermostat there. So instead, you can also disconnect the other line uh, for the 208 because you only need one. And cap it off with a wire nut. That way you don't touch it. And uh, so that way... Even if this calls, you don't have any power and you're not single phasing the, or getting one line through. So just a cautionary thing there if you don't want to go in and turn off the thermostat or you can't. This is a uh, simpler way just to take off, just to take out the line voltage altogether and then you're fine there. And now, Just make sure everything's good. I'm trying to see if I can show you while having it. See, 120. And that way, if anything goes wrong with your uh, with your connection. You knock it over, it gets, it starts raining or something happens. You just come over to the disconnect box, take it off, you lose power. That's the safest way that I can show you guys. And this unit's gonna need some maintenance. But, uh, you know, it's a safe way to do it. I prefer this way. That way you don't hook up directly into the box. And then if something happens, you know, God forbid, uh, you find yourself in trouble there, you can just, you know, disconnect the breaker there. And that's it. After that, we took off the power and just put it back together and you're fine. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. A uh, short little tip type thing I was asked a couple times it came up in my comments a few times about the cheater cord that I use to be honest I was scared of it at first I even bought it and just did not use it for the longest time I kept running extension cords but that's a hassle especially on those roofs commercial roofs where you have nothing close to you and you don't have those unicorns on the roof I don't know if you heard that phrase before, but if you find water axes on the roof, like a water spout, a faucet, or anything like that, or if you find a working outlet, those are unicorns. You never see those. So I think in my 14 years, I've only seen one roof top water axis and a handful of working outlets. Like they never work. So this is, my workaround to running extension cords because I work in kitchens. Um, so if I'm on the roof running a 100 foot 
extension cord. I gotta be careful that nobody trips on it. Nobody unplugs it, nobody damages it or anything like that. So that's my solution to that is using the cheater cord. Now, um, this is the way I use it. Please be careful if you do use a cheater cord, but be mindful of, of your surroundings, how you use them. Uh, if anything's exposed, make sure nothing's touching. Keep it out of the way if possible and try not to be around it uh, to knock it over. And just be safe guys. So that's how I use that. Hope it helps some of you. Like I said, I had done this because I got asked for it and I, when I bought mine, I never saw, or I didn't find any good videos on how to use them. And uh, if you guys have seen people use them with the disconnect, uh, the live side of it, I wouldn't. Um, or if you're one of those that does that, here's a safer type of way to use it. You keep the system out of, out of the circuit and then you uh, have your disconnect still to take off the power if something happens you always need a disconnect so the way i hook it up you always have something to shut off the power to if you need to if you if it falls if it gets loose if you knock it over quickly shut off the disconnect and you you don't have power you don't have to worry about it versus doing it on live wire and just being screwed so like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any other questions or need any help with anything else, don't hesitate to leave a comment and ask me. All right, so see you guys.